Uh, the table shows John's height during the first years of his life. By the way, this is uh, question number 58 in the TCAP practice test uh, for grade 7. Uh, which type of graph would best represent the change in John's height during these years? Now, really, they want us to take the information, and since this is in column form, it really kind of means we have x values and then we have y values, which I always think of, even though I did a terribly angled drawing there. Still pretty bad. I'm still looking at this type of graph for the most part, just because of how it's set up. Now, a line graph would be a great way to show height versus age. We put the age down here. We could show that you know he's getting a little taller each time, blah, blah, blah. So the line graph is a pretty good bet. A circle graph is more used to break up, uh, show how percentages are broken up. So we're taking a whole and breaking it up. The only thing I could think we'd use a circle graph for is if we wanted to show how many or how much he grew in each year I'm, based on his total height or something. Like the circle graph could represent 47 inches to age 5, and then we showed that uh, he grew, I mean, when he was born, it was like 19 out of 47. It's a really convoluted way to go about it. So the circle graph is kind of ridiculous, so we're going to get rid of that. Plus, I mean, he's born at 19. It gets to be 40. It's all weird. Anyway, the stem and leaf plot is a frequency measure. So it would be how often he's a certain height. Well, he's only the same height at the the year when he measures it one time. If he starts to be the same height a whole bunch, then maybe we'd use the stem and leaf plot, but it'd be kind of ridiculous because that would just be adulthood. If you're a child and you're the same height each year after year after year, there's a problem. It's probably medical related. Uh, you know, whatever. So that's out. And a box and whisker plot, I don't know why we'd want to uh, break his heights down and look at like the median value of his height and then what's the quarter four of his height. That doesn't make any sense. Doing a, a box and whisker plot here, would ha that would be if you're doing the same thing multiple times and you were trying to analyze ha what happened in the, the different trials. Not here. He's just getting taller. The line graph is a perfect representation of that because we can use an X and a Y. Everything works out perfect. So I'm going to say the answer to number 58 is F.